Holy smokers, folks, this ain't no dang joker. Stocks did just flip. We have stocks flipping actively right now, and I want to share with you guys what to be careful of next in this sort of market, which is a, uh, let's call it a little bit of a crazy market. We've seen some intense volatility lately. We've seen a lot of worries, a lot of scares, a lot of big headlines like, hey, you got to watch out for this and things like that. And so I want to share with you guys kind of this next thing that's going to happen over the next few weeks and uh, kind of explain what's going on here and what to be careful. Of. So I hope you guys enjoy the video like this. As always, we've got a lot to get into in today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It is very healthy. There's been studies done. And if you hit the subscribe button, it's much healthier for you. So make sure you do that. Also, Moomoo, they have a pretty sick deal going on right now. I'll have that as pinned comment down there. Also, first link in the description where if you sign up for an account with them and deposit literally any, any amount of money, they'll give you five free stocks right now. Yes, you heard me right. Five free stocks valued up to $3,500 just for set up an account and depositing any amount of money. A lot of times brokerages will you have to deposit like $500 or $1,000. You don't even have to deposit that much for this deal. So definitely check that out. It's uh, pretty insane. Okay. Alrighty guys. So uh, first off here, I had to share this meme with you. Brian sent me this over. I thought it was, oh, I thought it was too good. I, I think it was a little more true uh, three days ago, three trading days ago, but oh man, I just love this. I just love this. <laughs> Apple, Microsoft, Google, and the rest of this whole thing's a stock market. Oh man. I need to post that on Instagram. This is, this is too good. But anyways, guys, so if you've been tracking the market over the past three trading days, it's been good, right? It's been the Dow's been up and NASDAQ's been up. S&P's been up. Russell's been bouncing back heavy the last three trading days. VIX has been dropping substantially, which is a volatility index. Kind of shows you how uh, you know crazy stocks are at a given time. Look at the Russell 2000 just in the past three trading days. You know, you can go back a few days ago. Russell's trading at 2150, below 2150. And now Russell's all the way up to 227171 there, right? If you look at the NASDAQ, Huge bounce back over the past few trading days. I had to back this one out to a month because I just want to show you where all-time highs are. All-time highs are a little above 16,000 here for the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ's not there yet, but shoot, literally if we just had one or two more of these type of trading days, like we'll, we'll be back basically at, at near or at or even surpassing all-time highs in a few days if we have you know th this continuation on here. So big bounce back there in the NASDAQ as well. Fear and greed index. I spoke about this last week. This was going insane. We were in extreme fear mode literally, uh, you know, three or four trading days ago, right? The, uh, the, basically, we were at a 20. We were at a 20 uh, of extreme fear in the market. And because things have bounced back so strong in the past three trading days and volatility jumped way down, we're only into a fear market now. But literally, if the market has a good day tomorrow or a good day the next day, right, we could be basically right around neutral, which would be a crazy big bounce back in a very short amount of time to go from a 20 extreme fear to potentially all the way back to neutral within a matter of, let's say, four or five trading days. Like, that would be insane, right? We'll see what happens in the market, obviously, and we're going to speak about some of that, what's coming up here. But um, yeah, that would be that would be a big bounce back. Look at where we were a year ago at this time, right? 82, extreme greed territory. I think we all remember that market. Oh, boy, okay. If you look at some of these stocks, I mean, big bounce backs, even a stock like BABA, right? You know, we all know BABA is a great company. We know it's a beast out of China. We all know its valuation is low. Everybody knows that, right? BABA, the, the scary thing is it's a Chinese stock. We don't know about delisting. What's going to happen there? We go back a few trading days ago. Stock's trading at 112. Look at it. It bounced back all the way to 125, $13 a share in like Boop, snap of fingers real quick, right? In, in regards to a stock like Baba. Look at BYND, Beyond Meat, one of the most heavily shorted stocks in the stock market right now. BYND jumped $10 a share in the past three trading days. I mean, just a massive move. Imagine you, you bought 10,000 shares of BYND on, on Friday. You're already sitting with a $100,000 profit in three trading days. Think about that, $100,000 profit in three trading days. It can happen quick. Uh, of course, it's nice to have uh, larger amounts of money, right? But that one's just, you know, has been beaten down, beaten down, heavily shorted stock. Uh, potentially a dangerous stock for there to be heavily shorted in. It, it's amazed me, like, as that stock's gone down, the you know, shorts have really piled in that one. You know, although Beyond Meat's certainly not my favorite stock in the plant-based food space, it'd probably be my number three right now. At the end of the day, like, you can't, you can't deny the fact that BYND has a bright future in front of it. It's going to grow in future years, and it's already been pretty darn, you know, pretty dang devastating. So the shorts are piling on that one. I just say, be, be careful. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Imagine BYND starts putting up some good numbers. Possibility of the McDonald's deal starting to flow through in 22. 
and uh, getting back on the right track with maybe some product innovation there. I mean, uh, a, I, sure, I certainly wouldn't be short BYND. Not necessarily a stock I'm looking to buy right now. But shorting that, ugh, man, that's just scary. It's well, literally, I think it's a top five most shorted stock right now in the market. Crazy, right? Uh, FB, big bounce back here. FB's bounce back $30 or almost $30 a share, literally in a matter of a few trading days. One, you know, Facebook actually was getting kind of beaten down with the market there for a bit, which is surprising because at the end of the day, like Facebook's just a beast, man. They're just going to become a bigger beast over the next five, 10 years. And so this one seems to get sometimes put into the more speculative of big tech. They've never been able to get in that same category as Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, they're, they're, they're like flirting with getting there. I think it's just a matter of time. I mean, I think within 12 to 24 months, I think everybody will view them in that same light. It just hasn't quite happened yet. So when the market really turns down, Facebook does get hit heavily, right? But on the upside, sometimes this stock can way outperform some of the other big tech. So it is something to keep in mind there. You look at a stock like Fubo TV, Fubo, $16 a share on Friday, 1977, bounce back three. You know, a, these are some pretty big percentages. I know you know you look at something like a facebook and it's like well that one bounced back almost 30 dollars in the past three trading days well yeah but this one's a pretty darn big percentage here from 1694 to 1977 right if you look at a stock like honest i mean it was a sign to buy it on Friday. When it hit 777, you know I love this stock. I've been buying it the past month or two. I live in Vegas, man. When you see three sevens, and you know, it's it's good karma. That's all I'm gonna say about that. The three sevens are on, on Friday, and now all of a sudden it's back to 848, right? Big, big bounce back there. That's another one that doesn't seem like a huge number, but when you run the percentage on that, it's a pretty big percentage in a matter of three trading days. And that's what can happen with a lot of these small caps. If the market just bounces back, right? One or two percent. The small caps can bounce 5, 10, 15 percent and like boom, like snap of fingers in a matter of a few trading days, right? Oatly, been doing a lot of research on Oatly, really liking what I see there, really liking what I see. I was doing a lot of research last night into this one as well. And, um, you know, you go back uh, three trading days ago, 796 for this stock, right? And here today, 880. That's a, that's a massive bounce back in this one. I'm hoping that one goes back down. I'm, that's definitely. Could be my next plant-based uh, stock buy, Oatly, okay? So definitely keeping an eye there, hoping it falls, hoping there's more devastation over the next few weeks there, and I can uh, maybe get involved in that one a little bit. You look at a stock like Pfizer. I own this stock in my dividends-only account. It's done very, very well for me. This one's almost an inverse. Like, basically, if the market's tanking and everybody's talking about Rony Rona, Pfizer does great, right? It's like, woo, Pfizer. And then as soon as the volatility starts to slow down, look what happens with the stock. And I mean, look where it's gone over the past few days. Meanwhile, the whole market's gone up. Meanwhile, you know, all the small caps have pretty much gone up. Almost every stock in the stock market feels like it's gone up. And there's PFE Pfizer down over the past several trading days, right? Extraordinary. That one's literally like, yeah, it seems like if there's fear in the market, Pfizer goes up. If there's no, if it's kind of more of a risk on environment where people are looking to take risk, Pfizer also drops, drops, drops. Okay. Look at the planet. Nice comeback for the planet. You go back a few trading days ago, 327 or excuse me, 329 for this stock here today, 370. That's a big percentage upward move there for the planet there. That's still a steel deal for the long term. Anyways, purple been doing some research in this one. Listen to a conference call last week. I kind of like this one, to be honest, a little more speculative uh, mattress company plus a uh, betting company just overall. Uh, purple, this one, 969 a few days ago, 1067 now. Big bounce back for the purple company. That, that one's actually pretty darn intriguing to me there, okay? Sam Adams, so this is a stock I started buying probably, oh man, I don't know, was it three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that, roughly, it's, you know, maybe a month ago now. Sam Adams, look at the bounce back in this one, 12.3, this is trading at 4.53, here today, $503, $50 a share upward move there in Sam, and literally just the past few trading days, not like they've had any type of great news come back, it's just a market is, uh, you know, in a, in a better place for a lot of these, these stocks, right? A Sam, I wouldn't quite call it a small cap, but it's almost there, right? It, I kind of call it like, um, you know, uh, a smid. It's a smid stock. It's in between a small cap and a mid cap. I don't really, I, I kind of look at mid caps as being 10 billion plus, and I kind of look at small caps being 5 billion or under. So it's kind of in that, that, that in between, right? Of uh, It's a smid. We'll call it a smid stock. That's what Sam is. And uh, yeah, very, very nice bounce back in that one there. They make, uh, you, if you don't know them, Boston Beer Company. They make Sam Adams. They make October. Oktoberfest, uh, Winterfest, all those sorts of very, very popular beers. Twisted Tea. They also own the Truly brand, which is massive.
aggressive in the seltzer category. It's the second biggest player, only behind White Claw. Could maybe even overtake White Claw over time, okay? If you look at a company like this one, PayPal, large cap. Large cap came back hard in regards to PayPal, right? $17 a share. This is 180 a few trading days ago, and here today, 197 Big bounce back for PayPal. That one's been hit. That one just seems like easy money over the next three, five years. Like, it's one of those stocks, It's yeah, it's not going to be the biggest ROI on the, in the stock market, but is it pretty darn easy money over the next several years? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. You know, there's just, like, where's PayPal at three years from now? A lot dang higher than 197 A lot dang higher than 180 right? It's just no question about that. The, the Ford P's gotten pretty low on that stock. Still a crazy growth long term for PayPal. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't know when PayPal stops growing, but it's no time soon. And so, and with the valuation low as low as it is right now, remember they own they own not just PayPal, they own Venmo as well. I mean, they're they're kind of a big deal. Square huge bounce back in this one. If you don't know Square, they also own Cash App as well. Obviously, you know the traditional business from you know uh, being in maybe restaurants or coffee shops, things like that, right? But they also own Cash App as well. Twenty dollars a share in just a, look at this one. Just since twelve six. One one seventy four there, one ninety four here today. Twenty dollars a share jump back there for Square. I put this one into the large cap category as well, even though large caps they usually think about it as like you know hundred billion plus. Hey, this is this is in the large cap category. It's right there, right? And um, Squares are just another one of those PayPal-ish type stocks that it's hard to see it go down over the next three five years. Squares a a I would call higher risk, higher reward play than PayPal. That's what I think about Square. That's the way I view it. It's it's a it's a higher risk, higher reward stock than a PayPal. The the chances Square you know outperforms PayPal I think is pretty decent. But also if if things were to get bad, I think there's a much higher probability of Square going through some tough times than a company like PayPal to go through some tough times. PayPal is just much more diversified the way I look at that business. There, there's a stock like T Doc. This is Kathy Woods usually in the Arc Fund. It's usually their second or third biggest position. And look at the way this stock bounced right. From Friday, ninety dollars to today, one hundred and two dollars. I mean, that's a that's a big upward move. That's what on a percentage basis is that fourteen, fifteen percent or something like that in three trading days. In three trading days, I mean, that's a big that's a big bounce back. No major news has come out for for Teladoc and for a ten billion plus dollar market cap. You know, to get a stock like that to move fourteen percent or sure, whatever it is, that's a that's a pretty darn substantial move there. Okay, look at a stock like Win Resorts. Travel company, if Rony Rona talks, slow down in a major way. A stock like Wynn benefits from that in a massive way. It's a very fear-based or excitement-based uh, stock. If everybody's talking about travel being down and, and you know, Rony and, and all those things, the, the stock just, it can't do anything right, right? It doesn't matter what numbers they come out with. If that's the narrative in the market at that particular time, a, a stock like Wynn just gets devastated. However, if all this stuff fades, Wind just goes up and up and up, and look at the stock. I mean, that's a huge bounce back from 79 a few trading days ago to 88 there, right? So here's kind of, uh, I'm going to talk to two groups of people here, okay? We're going to talk to the folks that have a lot of money, and, and I'm going to give my two cents on that. And we're going to talk to the folks that are very uh, cash low right now because they've been buying heavily throughout October, November, and into this beginning, beginning part of December, and so they don't have much cash, Okay. So uh, I'm not going to talk to direct individuals, but we're going to talk to the folks that maybe have a little more cash right now, okay? To the folks that have a little more cash in the market right now, I think this is a good time to continue to deploy that cash in stocks you love, right? And so at the end of the day, if you love, uh, you know, Teladoc, let's say you love Teladoc, right? You think this is going to be a $500 stock five years from now, seven years from now. Buy the dang stock, okay? Like you don't, you don't wait to say, well, you know, it was down at ninety. It might go back down to ninety again, or maybe it'll drop even lower to eighty-five. Maybe it'll be some more tax loss harvesting in three weeks from now. No, if you're cash heavy and you haven't been buying the dip, now nah, now's the time to buy the dip, right? If you love Square stock and you're like Square is going to be a multi-hundred billion dollar market cap three years from now, five years from now. Buy the dang stock. You don't wait and say, ah, you know, it's Square might go back down to 174. No, especially if you're cash heavy because you're not in the position to uh, make those sorts of decisions. And if you're looking to put money in the market, if, if you're looking at PayPal and you're looking at that stock at a Ford P of 35 right now, and you're like, dude, PayPal is the next, uh, you know, trillion dollar market cap over the next seven, eight years. Buy the dang stock just because it might go down to 180 again or you hope it's going to go. It doesn't mean that's going to happen. You buy the dang stock. And so if you're cash heavy in this sort of market and there's opportunities you really love, you deploy that cash in the market right now. Okay. If you look at what Ray Dalio said, 
And, uh, you know, Ray Dalio is not my favorite person in the market, but I always, you know, like to hear what he has to say. And he brought out a great dang point here, okay? Ray Dalio right here in an interview done a few days ago, he says, cash is not a safe investment. It's not a safe place because it will be taxed by inflation. This was a phenomenal point, right? The only way you win with cash is if literally you're in an environment where the stock market crashes, real estate crashes, and, and you, 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 know, you have cash to buy, right? I always like to keep some cash on the sideline for emergency purposes or if there is a massive dip in the market. But if you're too heavy cash, it is, I 100% agree with him, it's not good. Because at the end of the day, the money printers are always print, right? And your dollar is being devalued constantly. Look at what your dollar gets you today if you buy into the stock market versus what your dollar got you 10 years ago. Look, heck, you could even look one year ago, okay? Look what your dollar gets you today if you buy a house versus what it bought you 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Look what it buys you at the grocery store today versus what it got you at the grocery store 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Look what kind of car you could have bought you know, uh, for the for forty thousand dollars ten twenty years ago versus what you can buy for a car nowadays. You know, uh, so if you look at literally category after category, you're gonna find that cash is truly not a safe investment. It's great to keep a little bit of cash around for a rainy day, for a stock market crash, or a major correction, or a real estate collapse, or just to make you feel safe at night, right? But the truth is, your cash is being devalued every day. Uh, Michael Saylor, it was a great interview done with Michael Saylor recently, right, where he was talking about basically how your, how your cash is consistently being devalued, and it's buying you less and less and less all the time, and there's likely no end in sight to that. And so this is something very, very important to keep in mind. So that would be kind of my advice to the folks that are maybe cash heavy right now is at the end of the day, if you see opportunities in the market, don't get so greedy where you're like, oh, it might go down. And at the end of the day, if you're deploying cash and you have a lot of cash, it's going to take you weeks or months to deploy that cash anyways, right? It's not like you just do it in a day or something like that. It's going to take you a while. So if it goes down in the meantime over the next few weeks or the next month or two, great. But remember, there's a lot of money that's moved to the sideline that's likely going to come back in in January, February. Just keep that in mind, okay? So that'd be my advice to those folks, okay? Now, my advice to the next group of people. Once again, I'm not going to mention names of any individuals out there, but there's also another group of individuals that are cash poor right now because they've deployed so much dang money into the market that now they're at maybe even less than 5% cash. And maybe a lot of these individuals usually like to keep 10, 20% cash. But they're really, really cash poor right now because they've been deploying every dollar into the market pretty much imaginable. And so they're getting pretty dang low, right? You can usually tell these type of folks because usually they're having to resort to uh, trying to do affiliate programs with stock brokerages and things like that. So that's usually how you understand they're, they're really hurting for cash, right? Oh boy. <laughs> and that, once again, we're not going to mention any names. But for this group of individuals, you're, you folks need to be very, very selective, right? Because you're getting down so low on cash that it can make sense to pull back a little bit from the buying, right? If I look at somebody like myself, I've definitely pulled back from buying the past several trading days. I haven't bought any stocks the past few trading days because I've deployed so much in the market. I don't have a ton of cash around anymore. And so now I have to be extremely selective. So if we get some sort of dip back down in the market over the next few weeks, which we're still, remember, we're in early December still, right? We could easily see more tax loss harvesting if there's any last stragglers, any funds that haven't already tax loss harvested, right, over the next few weeks that could dip the market back down. All of a sudden you get some fears or something like that, right? And for us folks, because we're so cash poor now, we have to be very, very selective with our buys, right? And so that's kind of what I'm doing. And if it doesn't happen and we don't drop back down, we just keep climbing, great. I'm already so dang invested in this market that that's fine with me, okay? If that's the end, oh, I'll take it, okay? But if we get devastated more and the small caps fall a bunch more, I'll be ready to buy, but I just have limited amount of money now, right? And so... That's kind of my two cents for, for all these individuals. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed a video like this. As always, that's my kind of two cents about all this. Don't forget to download the Hungry Bull in your iOS and Android store right now and make sure you subscribe to this channel. We always got the good stuff and uh, we got that Moo Moo deal down there. Help a brother out, okay? And also make some dang money, okay? Much love as always and have a great day.